All right, everyone, we're gonna get started. Welcome to Fairground St. Pete, and thank you for joining us tonight for Art After Dark, hosted by Fairgrounds artist, Jarius Moore. <laughs> Jarius Moore, formerly known as Indy Reese, was born and raised in Tampa Bay, and is a self-taught painter, digital artist, and muralist. He has been creating art since the age of seven years old. His art ranges from abstract to geometric to figurative art. He is also a writer and has a passion for poetry, haikus, and short stories. Jari Smore's three tribal eye portals at Fairground St. Pete reference the eye of Egypt. They are his interpretation of the quote, eyes are the windows to the soul. His cryptic eyes are on view in the Mermaid Star Motel's penthouse windows, and we have wonderful new merch by him. The eyes are available in stickers and keychains in the souvenir shop, so make your way there after the talk. And we just thought he was the perfect artist for this month because we have Hocus Focus going on, which is a whole eyeball-themed Halloween activation. So, we're gonna get started. Your bio says you started making art at seven years old. Do you remember starting to make art and that sort of process? Um, at the age of seven, I was like sketching, but not necessarily doing art physically. Um, I started in middle school. Um, I was doing um, aliens, superheroes, fashion sketches, everything, um, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's very exciting. So you went on and made art in high school, but then after high school, you spent almost a decade focused on photography. Absolutely. Can you tell us about those years and what you were shooting and what you were doing? So from middle school to high school, I was um, focusing on um, fashion. Um, so when I was focusing, focusing on that, it crossed over to photography. Um, I just really wanted to like highlight the editorials of um, African American women. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, you even had some things. Was it Vogue online? Yeah. Um, yeah. Vogue.com. I was um, on that for uh, uh, the day. Vogue of the day. That's a pretty big deal. And then it's through photography that you became known as Indy Reese. Yes. Where did this name come from? Indy is independent. Reese is part of my name, which is Joe Reese, so I just put it all together. Wow. Okay. And it's, uh, how did your interest in poetry and fashion translate into your art practice at that time? At the time, I was writing as well. Um, half, most of my poetry is based on like nature and stuff, um, so I started like doing flowers and plants and, um, um, sorry on my paintings, um, so just focusing on, on that and then just um, trying to get my words out, sorry. <laughs> Take your time, there's no rush. Uh -huh. So yeah, I was painting flowers and plants and stuff, so yeah, that transitioned over to from fo fo photography to um, paintings. And you do lot, you did live paintings, got started there, but you do live paintings still today. Yeah, um, I focus on um, the African tribal people, um, Asian people, and aliens, basically. <laughs> so you took a break for about 10 years, were mainly doing photography, but then jumped back into painting with live painting. So, how, I mean, it seems all of a sudden you started, you weren't painting for a while, then all of a sudden you decided to go out in there and do it in public. So. I was, I did a show, an event called Day Spark, which doesn't exist anymore. Um, and I got noticed by um, a couple of people that used to work at Smoke and Words, which is like a open mic place. So she asked me to do um, live paint one time. And then after that, I did it every Thursday for like two years. Yeah. And sort of as you can see on the TVs here, you're known for works that feature African women, tribal patterns, and of course eyes. What does this sort of subject matter mean to you? Basically, I just wanted to honor the woman, um, the black woman, um, as queens, and, um, 
things like that. And then I have like a whole series based on this series right here, Ashton Made Girls. Um, they're like aliens, but they're not aliens. They're just like representing it. So, yeah. And you created the, these, the sort of idea around these in partnership with somebody else, correct? Yes. Um, his name is Addy Roth from California. Um, we just created this whole series of um, a whole world basically called Ashton Made. Yeah. Really fun. So you also work digitally, well, like your works at Fairground St. Peter Digital Artworks. Is there a difference when you're painting or making the works digitally in it's your practice? It's definitely a difference. Um, doing digital actually helped me paint, uh, be a better painter. Um, basically, you learn like little color patterns and stuff like that. When we spoke, you talked about having to gain the confidence to call yourself as an artist. Yeah. Talk us through that process and what that was like. <laughs> as you can see, I'm shy. Um, so yeah, um, I was no, I used my name as Indy Reese as a a mask, which is also represented in my work. Uh, the mask is like representing of power and protection. Um, Indy Reese was just a scared kid, and Jarius is more grown and just focused on like abstract stuff now. So you really have transitioned over this last year yeah. from that Indy Reese sort of caricature of yourself almost to being Ja Reese Moore. Yeah. And then when you were making photography for those 10 years, did you think of yourself as an artist or was it when you got back into the painting? Um, I, I thought of myself as an artist, but I wasn't like that much sure of what I was doing at the time. So I just was kept painting all the time, and then it started popping out, and people started noticing me. Um, I got a lot of offers to do murals in, in the cities and stuff like that. So how did the offers for murals come about? People just saw your paintings and thought, I want this large scale, or? Tony from Merge Culture um, got in contact with me during COVID. Um, he said, put a group together, and uh, see where it goes from there. And I started working with um, two, three other people. We call ourselves New Roots Art Collective. It really doesn't, it doesn't exist anymore, um, but like we're on the break right now. Um, we did the murals, we did the Black Lives Matter mural. We did the um, $20 bill, Harry Tubman. And uh, we got a couple of other murals around the city and also the Copeland Park, basketball park. Um, and that $20 bill, Harriet Tubman is the one maybe that I, I just saw out there sort of everywhere yeah, and talked the about so much. Will you tell us about how that subject matter came about and um, that mural process? Um, actually, Tony came up with it, um, the $20 bill, Harriet Tubman, because it was the talk of the town in the papers and online and stuff like that. Um, he asked me if I wanted to be a part of it. I said, yeah. Um, he asked me what would I like to do. I, at the time, I didn't know what would fit on the dollar bill um, because you know it has like opposite faces and stuff like that. So I was I worked on my mask as a part of a dollar bill. And you mentioned it was at Copeland Park. Yes, Copeland and Park. You worked with this. Is that with the city of Tampa that you worked with? Who did who? the city of Tampa and also Tony March Culture and that one is my design. Wow, it's wonderful. I think we'll have an image pop up here yeah, sooner or later. It's like primary colors. Mm -hmm. um, and the works you made for Fairground St. Pete are eyes, which ties perfectly into Hocus Focus. Uh, what do eyes represent for you? Um, the eyes in the be beauty is the, in the eye of the beholder, also the eyes of the soul to the wind, the window to the soul. Um, but I, I'm also like, attracted to everybody's eyes, so that's why I look at automatically, and I just wanted to focus on that. Incredible. And what is it like to be a fairgrounds artist and to see your work up there <laughs> it's, here? It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually honored, and I appreciate it. Yeah, we were so thrilled. You applied during our first call to yeah, artists. Yeah, like three years ago. Yeah, and so you were sort of one of the originals <laughs> yeah. that we first announced, and you know, it took us a couple years to get open and built, and there they are, and we really love them up there in the penthouse windows. And of course, you're up there with Nick Davis, who we miss very much, but yeah. it's, a, it's a great pairing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So what are you making now? Um, right now, I'm focused on the on this character, which is um, my son people. Um, they come in like different colors and different shades um, and different patterns, like these you'll see through the screen. Um, and also, I'm still focusing on the um, Astromech girls and also totems, yeah. like uh, abstract totems and sculptures and stuff like that. And you have a couple besides the Astromech girls and the Sun people, mm -hmm. right? Are there other characters that you have? Oh, yes, I, I, yeah, I have the Dreamer, which is like my main character. I created the Dreamer while I was, actually I was in the hospital, I created that character. Um, and I just, it just was like, I wanted to focus on something and it came to me in a dream. Um, yes, I created it. And what draws you to sort of keep on repeat, you know, going back to these same characters and sort of expanding on them? Because I can do variations of them and I can do like different meanings and uh, stories for them. And for all the people out here who are interested in your work, where is the best place for them right to now, find out about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now the best place is my Instagram at artofjaw. Um, out of job, just out of job. Yeah. It's if you go to the fairgrounds.art website and click on artist, you can link to it from there. But when you have your works online, the digital works and paintings, can people just DM you and purchase things directly Absolutely. from you? Yes. Nice. That's a good way to do I it. I prefer it that way. <laughs> it's easier. And do you do commission work? I do. All right. Yes. And um, anything, you know, New Roots Collective murals or anything coming back or on the horizons? Yeah, I'm actually um, doing um, Tampa walls um, soon. Tony actually just called me and told me that he found me a wall. So I'm just waiting to see what it looks like. Um, and I'm gonna do one of my song people on it. Oh, nice. Yeah. And you'll work on that individually? Yeah. Very individually. cool. Do you know where it'll be based? Or like where the wall is located or anything? Not right now, because um, he didn't tell me. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's two of, two of us that's in New, um, New Roots Art Collective are working on Miro Solo. And how did you get to know Tony? Good question. <laughs> um, actually, I met him through his girlfriend at the time um, at the art event called, um, it was a, it was an art event for a album release party. Um, she asked me to um, create a piece off of the, one of the songs called Welcome to the Jungle. Um, I don't think the piece is on here. Um, so yeah, I met him through her basically and then we just had a connection. Um, I've done a lot of stuff with him. And your bio talks about your interest in poetry and you were going to all these open mics and things. Do you write poetry yourself? Yes, I do. Is it published anywhere that we can no, see? No, not yet. <laughs> I, I want to. Are you gonna tie it in with the yeah, visual do, arts yes, practice? I yeah, mm -hmm. I do. Um, the last show at um, HCC, Dale Maper Campus, I had a collection. Um, the whole New Roots had a collection there. I wanted to have the poems next to them, but it was not enough time. Um, but I do, I, I do write, I have a lot of my stuff when I create my paintings. Yeah. And do you perform poetry at open mics? No, no. <laughs> no, okay. No. <laughs> well, we're just so excited to celebrate your work, have it on view, have the merch in the gift shop, and have you here tonight. And I know there's some other people with questions. I, just from our Fairgrounds team, they were so excited to have you in the house. Are there any sort of, I'm going to open it up to question and answer. Is there anyone out there that wants to ask Jory something? <laughs> I'm going to give you the mic. I knew it was going to be her. <laughs> so you have so many wonderful art projects. What is your most favorite art project that you've ever done? Actually, it was a mural that I did inside of a warehouse. Um, one of my friends has a warehouse called Debonair District. Um, they do screen printing. Um, and I painted a mural in there. It's called Seiko. I, I think I um, sent it over, but we'll see. What is the subject matter? It was just one of my um, tribal girls. Yeah, that was my very first mural, and that was fun. Fun, fun, fun for me. And why female characters more than male? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. Um, I guess because it's easier to draw. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, <Yeah. laughs> it's easier to draw. That's this is Seiko. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Who else has a question? Anything else? Oh, we got some more. Um, when you first got P 
paid or commissioned for a piece of art? Like, how did, how did that make you feel? And like, how did you go about asking for money for it? <laughs> <laughs> That's always a hard question. Um, honestly, I didn't ask for money. I was offered money um, to do a mural. Um, which is what was the Copeland Park mural. Um, I got it. It's Florida, that happens every now and then. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, um, we got paid for that um, mural um, through the city. Um, and that actually made me um, feel validated, like I was a real artist. Even though I know I'm a real art artist, Anybody who can pick up a pen and draw something, they're an artist. That's well said, Ashley. Uh, you've referred to your pieces as characters and you have a story. Is there a place where we can read the stories? <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> Other <Yeah>. questions? <laughs> Anyone else have something to ask Jarius? Well, I just thank you all for being here, and especially Jarees. We've been wanting to have you in the space to talk about your work. And again, we have stickers and keychains of the eye portals for sale in the gift shop. Our next Art After Dark will be in November. It's the third Friday, and that will be with Miss Crit will be here to talk about her work. So we're excited for that and hope to see you there. Enjoy the rest of the night in Hocus Focus. If you haven't found it, there's a bar in the back corner. The gift shop is that way. And we're just glad to have you here. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions for me afterwards, you can ask me. Yeah, come up and ask any questions. Thank you.